and welcome back to another episode of Project Supercar. Now although we touched on steering in the last episode, I do want to go over it in greater detail in this one. Now there's quite a lot of maths involved and we're not really going to go into that in great detail, but there are some problems that some car designers and kit car builders might fall into. So we'll touch on those and hopefully you won't make the same mistake that others have. I think what I'll do is I'll jack this car up and open the bonnet so we can look at the steering on this car so to give you an idea of how it works while I try and explain things. Ryan Little. <laughs> bonnet is open and I've got both doors up as well so I'm just going to get into the car very delicately because I don't want anything to topple because everything's quite fragile because remember this is just a wooden mock-up so I'm going to get into the car turn the steering wheel and then uh, hopefully you'll see how the steering works okay gently does it Phew! I'm in! Right, I can show you the steering. The steering column and the steering rack were taken from the original donor car and worked really well for this application. Now there is no movement in this, you can't tilt the column, um, but the other donor car I'm stripping, which is the, the Audi A6 2.7T, does have an adjustable steering column so that will probably be fitted on the turbo chassis. Anyway for now let's just turn the steering wheel. Now the lock to lock on this car is quite short. Okay it's one and that's it. Not quite two turns lock to lock. This is going to be great on the racetrack. But anyway, let's talk about Ackerman steering. Now that's something I had to get right on a road car. Now there is actually something called anti-Ackerman steering and it's all to do with tyre slip. Take a look at this video here if you want to learn more. In simple terms, Ackerman steering is where the inside wheel steers more than the outside wheel. Here's a video that goes into greater detail. The steering linkage connecting the steering box and wheels usually conforms to a variation of Ackerman steering geometry. This is required to avoid tyre slip when turning a corner. This geometric arrangement of linkages in the vehicle steering has been designed to solve the problem of wheels on the inside and outside of a turn needing to follow different radii. The solution to this is for all wheels to have their axles arranged as radii of circles with a common centre point. Because the rear wheels are fixed, this centre point must be on a line extended from the rear axle. Intersecting the axis of the front wheels on this line requires that the inside front wheel is turned through a greater angle than the outside wheel. When I turn to the left, you'll see the inside left wheel turning more than the outside right. And then when I turn to the right, you will see that the inside right wheel is turning more than the outside left wheel. 
Seen from another angle, you may notice the change in camber as the wheel is turned left to right. As the wheel moves inward, the camber is reduced. If you steer it the other way, the camber is increased. Now there are different types of steering rack. The oldest style, which is normally found on trucks today, has a steering box something like this. Now on most modern cars today you have a steering rack which is a rack and pinion steering which looks like this. steering system looks quite simple and it is but there are things you need to remember when you're going to use one in building your own supercar now some rack and pinion steering systems have the pinion above the rack and some have the pinion below you need to make sure you get the right rack because depending on the location of the pinion will determine the direction that the rack will travel Take a look at this video, this might help to uh, clear things up. In this animation, the rack moves from left to right, and as the pinion changes from the lower rack to the upper rack, you will notice that the pinion itself changes the direction it is rotating. If the rotation of the pinion did not change, it would be the direction of the rack that would have to change from left to right to right to left. So say you've picked your steering rack. Now the pinion could be uh, above the rack or below. But there's something else you need to consider and that's the location of the steering arm on the hub carrier. Is it at the rear or is it at the front? Now if you remember from the last episode, I've got BMW E46 front hub carriers on this car and the steering arm on these hub carriers face forward so when the steering arm pushes in this direction like that then the wheel will steer outwards okay now consider if that arm was on the back and this arm was being pushed in the same direction as it is now the wheel would actually turn in the opposite direction. So, if you try and turn left in your car, you'll actually steer right, and vice versa. Now when I used the steering rack from the original Audi A6 donor car, the arms on the strut faced forward which are the same as on the BMW E46 front hub carriers. So the steering rack on the Audi A6, I believe it was the C4, moved in the correct direction, so the steering worked well. I did try and find some video footage of you showing you the early suspension setup of an Audi A6, but I just couldn't find any. So um, here's just a, a picture, just to try and show you what I mean. If you see that the steering arm on the, on the image faces forward. Now if you take a look at this one, the steering arm faces backwards. Which means this steering rack works in the opposite direction. Which also means I can't use it on my supercar. 
Now there is another problem when using a steering rack from another donor car, is you have to get the joint of the tie rod to line up with the upper and lower pivot points on the wishbones. If you don't get these joints to line up, you can suffer from bump steer. And because I changed the width of this car, it was going to be almost impossible to find a steering rack that was suitable for this application. That is the reason why I went for the center point steering rack that I have on this car. Now these might seem simple things to figure out, but even the best of us can sometimes get caught out. The night after I made that bracket, I was crawling into bed, ready to dream about riding a unicorn naked through the streets of Berlin, um, except that the unicorn has the body of a giant cat, and the head of the unicorn is the head of Lady Gaga. Uh, what? You, you haven't had that dream before? Weird. Anyway, ready to go off into dreamland, and then it hit me like a bolt of lightning. I was taking a front steer rack and putting it behind the wheels, and in doing so, uh, was about to create a car that when you turn the wheel right, the car would go left. Stupid! But here's why I'm an idiot. On a front steer rack, if you turn the car right, it pushes on the right tie rod, thus pushing the right steering knuckle, pulls on the left tie rod, thus pulls the left steering knuckle. Wheels turn to the right. Now if I take that same rack and put it behind the wheel center line, as I was doing with the Miata rack, I turn right, and once again, it pushes the right tie rod out, which pushes on the steering knuckle, and pulls on the left steering knuckle and the car turns to the left. So the left hand drive, my out of steering rack, goes back to rock auto. So we've got the steering rack and the steering column all sorted out. So your steering's all done, yeah? Well, not quite. There is one thing that we've got to think about and that's the steering wheel itself. Now when you're building a low slung supercar, one of the things you're gonna be struggling with is getting in and out of it. So the steering wheel might get in the way. One of the things you can do to help that is to put a smaller wheel and perhaps have a flat bottom steering wheel fitted. Now this wheel is just an aftermarket uh, cheap wheel I got off eBay. It's really for mock-up purposes. Um, I suppose we'd better touch on the legal side of things. Depending on your own country, steering wheels have to pass certain rules and regulations and on steering wheels they've got to have a British standard stamped onto them. I'm pretty sure this wheel would fail any test. So let's check the size of this wheel. It's about 350 millimeters in diameter. Now I can use the steering wheel from the Audi A6 donor car. It's a little bit bigger, but I don't think it's gonna get in the way of my legs at all. Let's just measure this one. This one is about 375 millimeters. But there is a problem. This wheel has an airbag and there's no way that you can get an airbag system to work in a DIY supercar, home built car or kit car. There's way too many complicated systems that are involved. So although I could fit the airbag back into this steering wheel, it wouldn't work, which isn't a major problem. However, it would fail the test because it would still say airbag on it. And if it says airbag on it, it has to work. So I'd have to cover that up. But I think there's another problem. I'm going to have to pull the steering wheel off to show you what I mean.
I'm going to have to bring the camera in so you can see. Now if you take a look inside there, you'll see that the steering wheel was held on by a large nut. Now let's take a look at the Audi A6 donor car. Let's pull the wheel off the new donor car. Don't worry, I will show you how to remove this steering wheel in another episode. So if we take a look at the steering column, I'll bring the camera in in a sec, um, you will find that this column doesn't use a nut, it actually uses a bolt. I wonder if you can quite make that out. Hopefully that's going to focus. Ryan Little. <laughs> so what does this mean? Well, it means this steering wheel won't fit on this steering column. Now although I do like this steering wheel from the uh, new donor car, and I think I will end up using the steering column from that same car, um, I would like to fit the flat bottom steering wheel from the Audi TT, something like this. But I'm not sure if the splines inside this wheel are the same as on the Audi TT. That's something I'm gonna to have to research. Whew. So anyway, designing the prototype using the original Audi A6 C4, um, I got all the sums right and the steering worked perfectly. As you can tell, with this video. none of the steering parts are going to be able to be used on this prototype. Mm, well, maybe the steering column, but I think the rest of it I'm going to have to redesign and I can't use those parts, so I'm going to have to try sourcing different parts. But I think that will be in another episode in the future when I start work on the turbo chassis. Now, it might surprise you that many cars don't actually have true Ackerman steering. Usually the designs get close, but have to make a compromise due to packaging, the, the wheelbase, the engine, and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so I think that'll do on this episode. Oh, I'll, I'll just give you an update on the leaflets. If you remember, just before the um, kit car show, I had about 5,000 of these leaflets made. Unfortunately, because the turnout was so low at the show and there was a complete car park missing, I only actually managed to hand out about 500 of these. So I've got about 4,500 left. And then I found out that some people who took the leaflet and were very interested couldn't find my channel on YouTube. So I don't know what's going on, but people who are trying to look for my channel can't even find it. Anyway, I want to carry on battling. I've got to get over a thousand su uh, subscribers. Um, you know, I need the ad revenue. I'm not going to uh, lie to you. The ad revenue is what I need to finish this car. So anyway, I'll, ca I'll carry on making the videos for you. And if you could spread the word, fantastic. I appreciate all your comments. I'd just like to say that I appreciate all your comments and likes and all that sort of thing. It uh, gives me motivation to carry on with these videos. So I'm, I much appreciate all 
the lovely support that everyone's putting into this channel already. So thanks everybody. So anyway, I think that'll do it for this episode. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.